Okay, so if I were to be completely honest with you, one of the things that's starting to scare me the most as a guitar player is actually the idea of the tube amp. And that's a really weird thing to say out loud. And that's a really weird concept to me, especially because it's one of those things that I never would have said just two or three years ago. I grew up on, and in a lot of ways, really cut my teeth in the few chops that I have on learning tube amps and trying to discover the ins and outs of what it really means to get good tone. But over the past couple years after having received four to six very severe noise complaints from neighbors that just come from the day-to-day -day headaches of apartment living, some of which are very warranted and I take full responsibility for, I feel like I've gotten pretty hesitant when it comes to relamps and especially, well, <laughs> tube amps and there's just this general intimidation that just starts to kind of overwhelm me. It's like I'm afraid to really dig into the strings, I'm afraid to turn the volume up past five and I'm afraid to really go at it while I'm strumming. I remember even about a year ago going over to one of my buddy's houses and I was gonna get to play through his like vintage Fender amp so I was so excited but every time my pick would hit the string my hands would like start shaking and I just noticed this general level of discomfort. It's as if my brain associated loud noise with bothering people and it's actually been quite the problem that I've had to get through. And there are definitely different innovations that have helped me find my way around this problem over the past couple years. Things like the Oxbox or different digital modelers that I think at times can compete with almost any tube amp. However, just being the blues wannabe that I know I want to be, I know there's a definitive upside to learning to both practice and play through louder amps. Now lately I've been doing that in a bunch of different ways, you know, using different things like my Yamaha THR, different desktop practice amps to sort of easily transition myself back into louder sounds but sometimes I remember that it wasn't necessarily always this way. I tend to forget that this apartment right here isn't the first ever time that I've had to be cautious of sound because of, well, thin walls. I mean, there was a time specifically back during college where I would crank my amp in my little 12 by 20 foot dorm room where I would be having jams multiple times a week where I would have friends bring their 15 and 20 watt tube amps. And like I was stating before with a lot of these digital modelers and different innovations, in a lot of ways they have been able to give me that sort of feeling again, but I often wonder if I can ever get back to that with tube amps. Especially when it comes to learning to not feel as much fear at high volumes and learning to embrace some of the limitations that I have in a room like this while still getting a tone that would be suitable for some of the sounds that I'm starting to utilize. So the amp I'm gonna be doing all this with is the Tone King Gremlin, which is an amp that I've had my eyes on for quite a while after having playing the VST from Tone King Imperial, which is kind of like his older brother, but it's only five watts, which I think is a lot louder than a lot of people sometimes give it credit for, and it'll be loud enough to both face my fears and embrace sort of the tones of the small amp sound. That I do think in a lot of ways could take my tone to a whole nother level, but with all that being said, let's see what we're doing here. <laughs> Most guitar players will probably tell you playing through small amps is a significantly different experience than playing through like your friend's 100 watt Marshall stack. Lower amps are significantly less powerful and tend to break up more easily. Now, especially if you're using some humbuckers, if you're in a living room or a bedroom setting like this, your volume knob is gonna be your best friend and your worst enemy. And you're gonna have to get to know it by just playing with it over and over again. Now, the thing that I was trying to do after experimenting with this amp was to find the Tone King sound, which has been described to me both by the internet and by what I was hearing from different demos as something along the lines of like a vintage Fender amp. And especially since I was using an almost SM7B style mic with a lot of really great low end presence, I wanted to see what I could do once this thing really started breaking up before I even went to the pedal. I basically wanted to keep it as bare bones as possible, just guitar, going into amp, adding a little bit of reverb and some post processing, but what I was noticing was, because this is a two channel amp and we have our rhythm and our lead channel, I severely underestimated just how much it would break up and just how loud it would get when I plugged into that lead channel. It was like a completely different amp and it was like having to learn the volume knob all over again. And I was wondering what I was gonna do once I wanted to get that real breakup tone, like which channel would actually be suitable for it, the lead or the clean once I added in more pedals. It was a lot of just continually reminding myself that you won't really master an amp or know an amp, or in this 
this case, learn how to use the volume knob of an amp really well until you used it in a bunch of different contexts and tried it with a bunch of different styles of tone and a bunch of different gain settings. So another thing that I notice when it comes to small amps, especially ones that are intended for bedroom use a lot nowadays, is that it's not uncommon to see a lot of built-in effects, even amongst tube amps. Now the amp that I was talking about previously, the one that I used to crank in my 12 by 20 foot dorm room, was a Fender Super Champ X2. And it had all these different reverbs and these different modulations, all of the different effects. And because of that, I thought that that was what you were supposed to look for when you found a tube amp. Which one had the most effects? Especially what someone would consider when they were looking into the ideal home or bedroom amp where they were trying to keep the volume low but still learn tone. However, there really is something to be said about a good pedal platform, especially when you have an amp as simple as this. I mean, this thing only has two knobs. It just gives you so many more creative options, especially if you're someone who has and likes to use a lot of pedals, which a lot of people do. And a lot of people get a lot of really incredible tones from that. I was first made aware of this when people started talking to me about the Pro Junior, which I didn't understand the point of it all after having coming from playing the Super Champ X2, I was like, why would someone want something with just two knobs where you couldn't have everything right there? But you have so many different creative options in dialing in your sound, especially if someone has a really attuned ear and knows exactly what they want. Like for example, I've been really chasing the Klon tone recently without having to spend like $5,000. And that's been my go-to overdrive or distortion tone with all these different Klon clones. So once I was able to dial this in with the lead channel, which I realized, I I didn't even need to set that high. The volume only needed to be at like one and a half or two before I really started cranking in this room. to this idea of facing my fears and being afraid to play this thing at past like say one and a quarter on the volume knob there is something that I've noticed with a lot of tube amps over the years and that's the actual attenuator and not only having it but having it built into the amp and that's a growing trend that I've seen over and over again whether it been with the Supros that I've had or with some of the new Mesas that I've seen online and I think initially on trying to face my fears I would think of that as like a bad thing you want to learn to play as loud as possible but the more and more I'm learning, it's not necessarily about learning to play loud, even though that is what I'm dealing with and that's a fear I'm dealing with. It's about learning the right volume to play at. So what, if anything, did we actually learn today? I think I learned a lot playing through the Tone King and actually hearing the air move through the speakers of a tube amp, not coming through an attenuator through my speakers for the first time in a while, even though I really, really like that sound and it's something that I'm very comfortable with. I think I learned that just like anything, practicing and just learning the different licks and techniques of being a guitar player and getting better, it's the same way with learning the intangibles. It'll take time and it'll take more time. I'm not completely comfortable with playing through an amp yet, even though I've been playing through the Tone King Gremlin for about a week now, trying to push myself more and more and more without getting completely frustrated and having my hand shake. And not just practicing at higher volumes, but I really do think experimentation is going to play a really big part in this, because you can play at higher volumes, but if you don't really understand the volume and the gain and the attenuation and how those relationships differ and how those can really shape completely different sounds and different styles of rooms based upon like your limit limitations of having neighbors or not having neighbors or trying to get specific tones, it doesn't really matter. But I do love that amps like this give you a lot of those possibilities and give you a lot of different things to build up to, especially with attenuation and figuring out the sound. Now, I definitely would also say that a drawback is you never really know what's going to happen with your neighbors. You never know who's next to you. You never know who's going to be bothered by what. So the concept of a bedroom amp is so different for every different person in every different environment. 
But the idea of me getting back to that place where I was, getting back to that freedom and that feeling of when I was playing that Super Champ X2 and really not caring what anyone thought and still trying to be a conscious neighbor and not ruin every single person in that dorm room's day every single day, but not being afraid to really push through the strings and really almost enjoy guitar playing. I want to remember what it felt like because everyone talks about how it feels. Hearing the air move through an amp in their ideal scenario of getting that 100 watt Marshall stack and they can just blast in their farm where no one's within like a five mile radius. They can hear the whole thing. But even in that scenario, I know I would be so scared because it's just been mentally ingrained in me that the more sound you have is bad and I wanna get out of that. But it doesn't matter what I think, what matters is what you think. So please let me know. When it comes to home playing or bedroom playing or just the ideal scenario where you're in right now, do you prefer digital modeling amps? Have you found a good tube bedroom amp? Do you hate the idea of modeling amps in general? Do you hate tube amps? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. So much fun just to be able to check out the Tone King Gremlin. I've been playing through the Tone King Imperial for like a year now. It's one of the best VSTs out there, I think, in terms of just complete sound. And everyone was talking about how the actual amp is just gonna be a completely different experience even though this isn't that actual amp this thing was really fun to check out so if you want to know anything more about the tone king gremlin got it from the homies at sweetwater the link is in the description make sure to check it out it's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you want to do or if you're just curious about any of the other gear that i use in this video make sure to check out those links like and subscribe if you had a good time most importantly like most importantly of all have a fantastic day